the clocks will to precedent on November 2nd, 1999. Those of you that are old enough and remember, we counted ballots as no law becomes legal for 90 days. Because there was no law in the United States, the bankruptcy, uh, the IRS does not exist for 90 days. The United States government does not exist for 90 days. The United States military under the Universal Postal Union was ordered a DEFCON 2 with their finger on the nuke button. We were at one minute to midnight for the end of the world. If anybody were to, if China or Russia launched an attack against the United States when we didn't exist, they were gonna go to nuclear World War III. That's how close we were to the end of the world. So for 90 days, they had everyone count ballots. Watch the left hand while the right hand took care of business. And on November 2nd, uh, February 2nd, 2000, Bush with 47% of the vote was the 45th consecutive left-handed president in the United States. No president has ever been right-handed in the United States since 1775. Left hand re develops the right side of your brain, which is logic. The right-handed people use their left side of their brain, which is emotions. Anytime two of you were to get into an argument, no matter what you are saying to, to each other, and you are heightened emotionally, I can throw a math problem at you. Like three times three times three equals 27. In a time it would take you to analyze the answer of that, you would take all your energy from your left brain, transfer it to your right brain, your blood pressure would drop 60 points, your emotional would become stabilized in three seconds, and you'd be using the logic side of your brain and stop fighting. So anytime you get upset, do a math problem, completely cancel your emotional upset. How's that for a <laughs> fix it? <laughs> Didn't know that about your human brain, did you? Yes. Nineteen ninety nine, November second. President doesn't take office until the even year. They're elected on the odd year. It's twenty twelve, yes. But the president doesn't take office until twenty thirteen. No, nineteen ninety nine, November second was the end of the third international bankruptcy. There was no election take place that year. I mean, the election took place, but the president wasn't appointed until the 2nd of February, uh, 2nd of February 2000. And Bush was, was reinstated. Uh, rather, uh, this was uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton said on November 2nd he would be the last president of the United States of America. On the 2nd of February 2000, the United States of America Corporation took over. The democracy was dead. The, the Constitution expired. So and what's that, the law of the land? You're a postal employee. You carry postage stamps in your pocket. So where does the UCC fall in? UCC is copyrighted by England, has no, no effect on the United States. If you use copyrighted material from a foreign country on a foreign vessel in dry dock, you're babbling because you don't have a copyright release. Only attorneys and lawyers and judges have a copyright release from England. That's why they joined the bar. If you're not a bar member, you can't practice in a foreign vessel in dry dock. So how do you capture a foreign vessel in dry dock? You don't. You create a court within a court. In other words, when you file a lawsuit with a stamp on it, it's a postage vessel. The postage vessel, vessel when it, the, the sentence structure says, this is the document because it came to the dock, received the docket number, and is now a, a document. Document contract, two or more people may contract. There is two people, your claimant and a vassalite. 
document contract postal vessel posted stamp on a piece of paper is vessel it's federal so it's a federal court venue the word jurisdiction people means opinion don't use the word jurisdiction why do you think you have a jury a jury ju means no law and ry is contract it's a no law contract the word judge uh, sits on a, a plane different than yours. Even in tribal law, whether it be the witch doctor is the judge, the king of a, a, of a tribe anywhere on the planet, a, a president, a di uh, dictator, they all stand on a plane to break the continuance of evidence as an actor on a stage, talking babble in adverb verb language. Therefore, you go into an auditorium, you see a person on a stage, they are under contract to perform, you buy a ticket, which is a contract of your opinion, your opinion is on stages, your stages, here's the plane of the stage, and then you have your, your seating going up. The bro the, this breaks the continuance of evidence with the stage, and you are only witnesses or opinion entities watching actors on a stage, no different in the courtroom. So the only way to engage and have your rights or whatever you're trying to do... Engage out. means no contract, I-N-G. To gauge when you go in there. And that's the correct word. You do gauge a situation. Gauging means to analyze, to look at the knowledge of your environment. You're gauging the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, you're gauging the conduct of what the actors are, ACT, no contract people, because they write all, everything in the courtroom is in, in an illusion. And I'm going to put a courtroom up here in a minute and show you the tricks and the traps that are going to happen inside that. So when I go to file a document or a doc. No, it's a document. It's a document, okay. Do I put my stamp on that document? Yes. And you sign it, making you the postmaster and, and postmaster, banker, and judge authorized to transport the vessel from the street into the vessel and dry dock. You send your, you, before you walk into the courthouse to dock your vessel, you mail it, registered mail to yourself. Your vessel has now been registered with the post office, which is controlled of the port authorities, which licensed the courthouse to dock its vessel on planet Earth. In the event, that you are the postmaster now signing the, the stamp to carry the document into the courthouse. You are the post, the letter carrier and postmaster authorized to transport the vessel to the clerk's office and you can't be arrested as a letter carrier delivering the mail to the courthouse, even though it's a foreign vessel in dry dock because you're already the post office which controls the port authorities, which docks the vessel. So you have a higher authority. You're like the senior judge of the courthouse. Little secrets. Then they still stamp that document. Yes, and when they stamp it, they made contract. Absolutely, you, I sign every every federal district court stamp. I sign over the top of it, capturing. Absolutely, you sign all yours and say they all have to be conformed. Give me that back. I'm going to sign my name over your stamp, and you sign your name too, clerk. And you usually have to have five copies. So do I send five? Actually, seven. They get two. You keep the rest five back. Okay, so. I mail seven copies to myself? No, 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 just the one. Just the one. Just to get the serial number. That's all you want. It's a registered serial number. Okay. But then how do I have a copy or... You keep the registered serial number. You're, you're going to mail it to yourself. You keep the envelope. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay? If you have one copy that's sealed inside there, it's always sealed inside there. If it ever comes to a... I'm not jumping the gun, but are you going to just go through all of these? Yes. Yes. I'm going to go through all the procedures on it. Yes. Ah, all of them are stamped, and if you sign the others in front of her, they all have to be conformed. If her copy is not conformed, then she has an illegal copy. She doesn't have an original. If you sign across their stamp, you have the original. Nay, she has to, repo she has to take possession of that. But she, she says, I cannot give you this document once I've stamped it. No, that's because they don't want you to be legal and become the chief judge of the courthouse in, so that you're in charge. You become the chief judge of the courthouse when you do that. So 
So if they don't give it back, how do you respond? Oh, I always get it back. I says, I'm, a, I'm the federal judge in this courthouse. I have my oath on file. You better give me that court back. This is under, under Title 15. Uh, which one is that? That's uh, Title 46, Section 9... 9 uh, I just tell them I'm a judge? 946. <laughs> well, I, I, I have a 17-year running position. Everybody knows me already. So how do I do that? Oh, you, if you sign... Uh, as she hands you back the documents, you sign all of them. And if she knows what she's doing, she'll give you back their copies so they're all conformed. Right. So because when you say to her, and she doesn't give me hers, then she is illegal. illegal. Right. You're saying, you know what? I have originals here signed. I says, now how are you going to explain to your boss that you don't have a signed original copy and you only have a, a half, half the, the, the position done? You didn't follow your, your duties. Wow. And that's what I'm wondering. Now, under Title 15, under Title 18, Section 641, folks, misappropriations. Title 18, 641, misappropriations. That means you took a paycheck and you didn't do your job. That's misappropriation for not doing your job. That's a 10-year, $10,000 fine, a $9,000 fine and 12 years in prison under another... Another title slide of the, of the same it comes under uh, 9, 946 instead of 941. What was the title number? Title 18, 641 through 665 is the mis misappropriations rules. You can pull it up on the internet and, and, and you know, go through the whole thing. Yes? So does that mean? Correct. And then we took ours back and they, they kept theirs. Correct. So was that correct? Or was, did no, no, they have their co two copies, you have your five. But in front of them, you sign or autograph, you autograph your name across their stamp. And when you autograph your name across their stamp, they have to give you back those two to autograph also. Otherwise, they're not in conformity. And that makes you in contract with that building, with, their, with that vessel being docked. And when she gives you a receipt for your money filing, you also sign that receipt. You sign your name across the registered mail sticker. You sign your name across the money sticker that's put on your registered mail. You sign your name across the stamp. Anything the post office gives you, you sign your name, across, autograph your name across it. Not sign, but autograph across that stamp. And if it ever comes to push and shove where you got to walk into court going, I'm a federal judge, I'm a federal postmaster, I've signed my documents. I have the physical evidence in my possession that goes with this. This was docked at the post office before it was ported with the port authorities. The, the post office has jurisdiction over the port authorities. And so therefore you haven't filed protocols. In my lawsuits that I file with you as your mortgages, identify the clerk of the court on the 48th day as the federal judge of that lawsuit because she's required or he's required, the clerk of the court is required to autograph her name or his name on that stamp as the postmaster receiving a vessel in dry dock. That's protocol. If they skip over that procedure, they're guilty of misappropriations. They can go to jail for 12 years. And you can have the, when you download the laws on this, you take it in with them under misappropriations, and you present that to them saying, here, read this. See what this says? Now do exactly as I tell you. If you've got a problem, you get your supervisor. If you've got a problem with that, you get the chief judge. If you've got a problem with that, call John Roberts at the United States Supreme Court. You've got a federal judge here, chief federal judge, can call the United States Supreme Court John Roberts. You can call Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State. I was Bill's counsel. So I'm killing flies in windows, glass windows with 20 pound sledgehammers, and I'm not breaking the glass. And so they, get, they come to me and they're going, like, We're not going to obey this. We're not going to do this. I'm going, like, You want to go to jail for 12 years? Feel lucky today? 
And he says, I'm the last man you want to go ahead and play games with. Why? If you follow the procedures, you can do it too. It's all about conviction. It's all about being cool and collective. Of course, I have an advantage of you guys because I don't have adrenal glands, so I don't have the jack high, jack low. <laughs> Me, I'm just, I'm just data. I'm, 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 I'm a Spock. <laughs> Since Star Trek came out, everyone's called me Data and Spock, yes. When you're an autograph, is it printed or is it can cursive be? No, 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 I'll always print it. Print it, okay. yes. And when I did that in school, they cracked my knuckles and said, you will not write that way. We we're going to force you to be in fiction. Uh, cursive writing in school? Say again? They're, they're taking cursive writing out of the public schools. Did you know that? They're taking it out because of this program. Yes, I've been suing... And the teachers are going, this is correct, we're wrong. And they're, 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 they're changing, this pro program is changing all languages on the planet. You can't move forward. You see, on January 6, 2012, there was a little glitch that took place. The Hummel's telescope took a picture. And the picture showed three more of these spacecrafts in Greenland headed this way, which will be here on 12-21-2012. For those of you that watch TV, there's a new TV show with no electricity. You know why? Because when you put up four, when you put up, here's Earth, and you put a quatrahedron with Earth in the middle, you've got line of sight, four spacecrafts the size of Lake Michigan, they have put a dampening field over the planet and shut down electricity. What do you think is going to happen in a world that runs on computers and electricity without electricity? They go back to 1880 overnight. How do you get the food to the populated areas? You don't. Huh? How do you farm your, 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 your farmlands without tractors? How do you harvest your crops? How do you run your canning facilities? How does 8 billion people get food? when there's no way to get it, move it from point A to point B outside of whatever you're capable of growing in your own garden or being able to can because you have a stove, a wood fire, a wood burning stove that you can uh, can with because you know, you know the principles of canning. I do, I know the survival issues. I know how to make water out of thin air with nothing but a sheet of plastic. Dig a hole in the ground, put a sheet of plastic, pour dirt around it, and overnight, it'll make a gallon of first fresh dew water, which comes out of the ground 24 hours a day, seven days a week, indefinitely. And you fill it, just run a little hose out, and you can pump it out of there all day long, fresh water, and have all the fresh water you need. It's pure as pure it can get, evaporating out of the earth from underwater, from the cysteine. How to make fresh water, how to do food, how to do canning, how to live without electricity. I've been there. I know how to do it. I always tell people, if there's, if there's ever any kind of an emergency, the place you want to be is in my back door because I know how to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's nice is I got Lake Michigan only walking distance from my house, and I can, that's a big lake, lots of, I got, I got my own boat, had my own boat building business for eight years until the, until the oil embargo took place in 73. <laughs> Put all of 80% of all boat building companies out of business. Everybody copy that already? So what's going to happen uh, December 23rd? Uh, it'll be the first day of winter. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if the world doesn't end on December 21st, make sure your 401k is paid up on December 22nd. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go next to the courtroom. I missed that. What was that about the 401k? I said, if you don't have, if the world doesn't end on December 21st, 2012, make sure your 401k is paid up on December 22nd. All the calendars written in the history of mankind going all the way back to the beginning of writing all in on 12-21-2012. That's the, that's the end of the fake world of verb. That's what it means. 
and the day the world kicks, kicks in the gear and goes to quantum. With five billion people studying out of eight billion, that's all the computers on the planet. Uh, Obama wants to push this through. The Chinese are pushing it with 150 trade partners. I believe that there's gonna be a, some kind of an announcement maybe on that day, that's on, that you're gonna turn on the TV, get on the internet, and there's only gonna be one thing you're gonna see. My program, study, you got so many days before we're gonna switch gears and the world's gonna change in the quantum. Simple as that. So, that's just my opinion. What's that? Oh, by the way, that the, if they put the dampening field up, batteries don't work, electricity doesn't work, solar doesn't work, wind doesn't work. The electron does not move. Where's, where's the dampening effect coming from? Dampening field is an EM field. It's like an EM pulse will take out electri elect electrical circuitry, closed circuit information. Okay. This, uh, the program on what a dampening field does, it stops electricity for electrons from moving. Uh, what would that? Who would be executing that dampening field? What's that called? The four, the, the four UFO spaceships in a quatrahedron, which is a four-sided triangle with okay, Earth in the middle of it, line of sight. What's the source of them? Why are they doing that? Where's that coming from? What's, what's well, they were here 50,000 years ago, so. They created the last ice age. Now, the people that leave that, that spacecraft, like <clears throat> if you go from Greenland, Washington Monument, Yucatan Peninsula, and Easter Island, it's a straight line. They're on with straight lines in nature. If you go from uh, the Lexer Pyramid through Memphis, Tennessee Pyramid, it intersects as a straight line with the Lexer Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. A sphinx, a pyramid, an obelisk. A sphinx, a pyramid, an obelisk. A sphinx, a pyramid, an obelisk. If you have time, You got the Vatican, uh, no, you got Egypt, the uh, pyramids, this is North Pole by the way, you've got uh, the Vatican, uh, Greece at the, uh, uh, Acropolis, Acropolis, where there's a uh, obelisk, Obelis at the Acropolis, Vatican Square, uh, Vatican uh, is a clock, a seasonal clock with a obelisk in the middle of it at St. Peter's. You go to Paris, which is the church built in 300 AD. Paris was the center of the church, Catholic Church in 300 AD. From there, you go to the Vatican, I mean to uh, London at the Masonic Temple, uh, where they have the rose line of, and the obelisk, the glass pyramid. You go from there to uh, uh, Washington, D.C., where you have an obelisk, and you end up in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. <clears throat> 